Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace, and this week we are talking about death. I know it sounds dark, but it's super fascinating. This is a podcast style show, in case you've never tuned in before. We take a big topic and we break it down into five different episodes so that everybody can understand it a little bit better, myself included. Make sure you go back and watch all of the episodes leading up to this because this is a big finale. It's going to be really exciting. And uh, so far, we've talked about the science and experiences around death, what happens to your body, both philosophically but also scientifically. And seriously, though, do we even have to die? Like, come on, do we have to? Yes. <laughs> is the short answer. We do have to die. At some point, we're probably going to want to. But we'll get there. Because there are ways that we're trying to beat death. Right now, the average age for humans is in the mid-70s. But there are still people that die before they're ready. And there are different ways that we can handle that. For example, cryonics. This is huge in science fiction and is not to be confused with cryogenics, it's a little different, or cryosleep, or any number of other things. They're all essentially this idea, and that is that we freeze the human body. We freeze it because freezing suspends its animation, and we're able to maintain our physicality, our physiology, for as long as we can. In 2013, a 23-year-old woman named Kim Swozy was dying of brain cancer. If you're a Redditor, you probably know who she is. She went to Reddit, she asked for help because she couldn't afford cryonic suspension. She wanted to cryogenically freeze herself. Why? Because she had brain cancer and she figured in the future maybe they'd be able to fix her. And most people come to cryonics institutes like Alcor, which is where Kim Swozy went, for a number of different reasons. Fear of death, love of life. They want to cure for their disease. They're curious about what the future will be like. Imagine if you could go to sleep today and wake up in the year 3000 and Talk to robots and fly spaceships that deliver stuff. You know, it would be pretty cool. But they also maybe just want to live forever. It's, you know, a goal for some people. With cryonics, you can deanimate people. That's what they call it, deanimation. And what they essentially do is they replace your blood with a cold saline solution. That cold saline solution cools your body temperature down. Everything slows. And eventually they can put you into some liquid nitrogen. How this works is through a process that's actually a natural part of your body called anaerobic glycolysis. And it's essentially that your cells, when they can't get oxygen externally, burn internal energy. Normally you get about 120 seconds tops of anaerobic glycolysis. But when you're frozen, that process is started but not finished. Maybe you'll get hours. Maybe you can get years if we re get really good at this. But at the moment, the problem with cryonics is a kind of a big one. We can freeze people, but we can't reanimate them. That's bad. But Kim Swozy said, we have to trust in technology. I think that's a pretty cool idea. And, you know, maybe we'll see her again someday. Who am I to say? And as long as we're trusting technology, why not forego the whole cryonics thing altogether and forego the whole body thing altogether? The human body is really the problem. The consciousness might be able to live forever. We don't know. But the body is what breaks down. So a Russian mogul named Dmitry Itzkov wants to do exactly that, skip the human body altogether. He's uploading his consciousness, or trying to, into an avatar. Basically, he wants to beat death. And it sounds crazy, but it kind of makes sense. And he has a really interesting plan called the 2045 Initiative. And it goes like this. Part A, 2020. That's when you make the avatar. It's an anthropomorphic robot, which is controlled via a brain-computer interface. So this guy, Dimitri, still alive somewhere, but controlling an avatar, sort of like a remote office thing with the iPad. The next level is B by 2025, which seems kind of early to me, Dimitri, but whatever. You get body B. Essentially, you take the brain out of the human, you put them into the robot. And in C, that's 2035, that's called the rebrain. That's where you literally get rid of the bio altogether. And you transplant the consciousness and personality into an artificial brain, into a different anthropomorphic robot. Now you're three levels removed from the beginning. Then you get D, that's immortality. You upload that consciousness into the computer entirely, you live your life as a hologram-like avatar, immortal, forever. Sounds insane. 
But he's hired 30 scientists to make this happen, and he believes that his dollars will set him free of death. And you know what? Honestly, we're getting there. Things are happening. It's moving and shaking. Death is a huge topic because everyone wants to delay aging and cure all disease. And honestly, we're probably not that far away. If you think about it in terms of things that we get to experience now that we wouldn't have experienced 100 years ago, 100 years ago, there was no germ theory. There was no penicillin. Imagine where we'll be in another 100. Maybe we won't even have diseases the way we do now. Maybe we'll have fixed infection or uh, diabetes of any kind or some kind of you know, uptake of our own body chemicals. We fixed that so we don't have to worry about not, you know, don't have to worry about overdosing on insulin or on any of our other own chemicals. We're getting there, but it's still kind of a long way off. And we have a few methods that we can read the brain to copy that consciousness out like EEGs, MRIs, fMRIs, CAT scans, but that's really just reading brain waves, doing x-rays, and reading blood flow. We even have nanobots that can scan complex neurons, but that's not reading our consciousness. It's not copying us. And since we can't reanimate after we've deanimated, and we can't copy our consciousness out of this body, for now we're kind of stuck. So maybe there's another way to do it, but I, I don't know. You should tell me in the comments if you have another way that you can think of. But essentially, even if we can copy things, and that's essentially what our body does all the time, we're copying ourselves constantly. Their estimates vary, but inside of our brains, they believe they're about two and a half petabytes, or about a million gigabytes. And those bits of information aren't binary, like in a computer, it's not a switch on and off. Each of those are trillions of synaptic connections all connected to each other with different states of memory. And we have to figure all of that out before we can copy anything from anywhere. And our cells are constantly dividing, constantly. And those constant divisions create DNA problems. So let's not get too crazy about this. Are we gonna kick death? Probably not, not anytime soon. But here's where we are now. They found Werner syndrome, which causes premature aging, was caused by heterochromatin, which is a tightly packed form of DNA. And over time, that DNA changes shape. In Werner syndrome, heterochromatin play, it behaves a little differently than it does in normal people. So it ages faster. So they figured, okay, if Werner syndrome is aging faster, and both people who age normally and people with Werner syndrome have heterochromatin, then what if we fix that? What if we fix the heterochromatin so it behaves completely differently? They did it, and it kind of fixed aging. Let me give you another example. In the ends of our DNA are telomeres. Those telomeres shrink as we age, because every time your DNA replicates, they get a little shorter. And they don't code on your DNA, and they don't cause cancers or anything, but they're very important. And if they get too short, that DNA can't copy anymore. That's called senescence. And mice bred with an enzyme that stops the shortening of those telomeres didn't just stop aging. They actually reversed aging. Again, wow. But we can't do this in humans, and it doesn't necessarily fix the problem. It's just these are two nails in the aging coffin. Because, for example, the telomeres thing, if we tried that with humans, well, we would all get cancer because the thing that stops them from shortening, kills us. At the moment, there is no cure to death. Sorry. <laughs> but we're slowly learning more about delaying aging, and we're avoiding telomere destruction, and we're changing that heterochromatin, and cancer is slowly being understood better and cured. But cancer is also a natural side effect of aging, so we're going to have to figure that out too, and we have a lot more to work on that. Think of it this way. You are you know, getting a whole new body every so many days, weeks, or months, depending on what cells you're talking about. And a copy of a copy of a copy is never as good as the original. So either we have to stop ourselves copying ourselves, or we have to figure out how to jump out of this system altogether. And maybe we figure that out in the future. But for now, we haven't. And here's some things to think about that you can tell me down in the comments if you want. Would we even want to live forever? Would we even want to beat death? I mean, 
What if we figure out how to upload our whole consciousness into a matrix that we can live in forever? Or what if we figure out how to stop aging and everyone can be 30 or 20 or whatever age you want forever? Eventually you're gonna be like, I'm good. It's part of life. So hopefully you learned a little bit about death this series. I know I did while I was doing the research. And it, maybe you're thinking about it more than you ever had before. Why don't you go down in the comments and tell me about it. I will also be down in the comments. I try and get there at least on the day that it comes out and I check back throughout the life of the video. Also, make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus. And if you haven't seen all of the episodes in this death series, check them out here. You can see them, they're pretty awesome. Uh, and also, come back next series, we're gonna do viruses. It's gonna be pretty exciting. And it, normally you would go the other way, you know, viruses, then death, but we decided to mix it up and be different. So thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>